everyone, my name is Chandni from Chandni Vlogs here on YouTube where I cover everything Formula 1 related and I am back to cover the Russian Grand Prix, the inaugural Russian Grand Prix for the Sauber Formula 1 team. This is my perspective on the race. Now you may have seen on the team's channel that there was not a Japanese Grand Prix roundup or a Russian Grand Prix preview and that is in respect for the events that happened in the Japanese Grand Prix weekend. My thoughts are with Jules, his family and Marusha. It was so lovely to see all the support that the drivers had um, including Esteban and Adrian and the Formula One car itself carrying stickers and thoughts and messages for Jules Bianchi. Everybody in the team keeping their thoughts with him as well. Now obviously since this was a back-to-back -back race with Japan, Free Practice 1 was the first time that the engines were started since the events in Japan and of course the race that still had to go ahead. So Russia is an inaugural race and we have had one which was in Austria which I also covered for the Sauber Formula 1 team but it hasn't happened for over a hundred years which was a very long time ago and this track is brand new. Built in the Olympic Park in Sochi and it's a real mix between Abu Dhabi and Valencia in my opinion. Personally I think there were some positives to take away from this whole weekend in general but I'm going to first of all start with free practice one and then sum up my thoughts at the end of this video. Free practice one, Adrian Sutil was with uh, Sergei Sorokin who took Espa Gutierrez's place. Sergei Sorokin is an 18 year old Russian driver who has been linked to the team several several times and um, he finally got his shot to be in the car and to kind of show what he's capable of and it was really great to see he didn't make any mistakes, he was able to improve and continue and I think that was one of the most important things um, for the team to kind of just get through their program through Friday and Saturday without any hiccups along the way or any damage to their car or anything like that. He finished Free Practice 1 P17 and Esteban Gutierrez was back for Free Practice 2 in the afternoon. And of course all the drivers trying to learn the track as quickly as possible because of course nobody has raced here before and I was actually told that many of the drivers were watching the GP2 series to try and understand exactly Exactly how the starts work and some of the places where overtaking can be possible. Free practice two, Esteban Gutierrez actually missed, of course, free practice one for Sergei Sorokin, and so when he came back in, he said we had a very productive afternoon. He was quite surprised by the track's performance, as the tyres were working quite well with the grip level, and um, they think that they extracted a lot more in free practice two than they actually expected, and um, he was hoping that, of course, qualifying then went very well. In terms of Adrian Sutil, in free practice 1 he ended 15th and in second practice he was 15th and for Gutierrez um, in second practice he was 18th and for um, Adrian Sutil who of course ended both practice sessions P15 he said the track had some nice corners in general, the balance of the car is good but it's not enough but they did however say that they may not have made a big step forward. Now this is the part I really want to get into and that is qualifying. The difficult season that they have had so far getting into Q2 has been quite difficult for the team and they were able to over here which is a real positive. Esteban Gutierrez he actually ended 14th and Adrian Sutil 15th however they did say that you know these are kind of the results that are realistically expected both of them got into Q2 which was really really good um, and Esteban actually says it was great competition between him and his teammate pushing each other which I think is a very healthy thing in Formula 1 and um, it was very important of course for them to put in a very strong qualifying lap especially you know since that's what the whole rest of the grid is doing. Esteban did however have a couple of problems in Free Practice 3 so it was a really good recovery for them to get into Q2 as well. Overall Esteban qualified P14 and Adrian Sutil qualified 15th so both the teammates pretty much side by side. Adrian however did have a couple of problems trying to get temperature into the tyres and saying that you know that was pretty much the best that they can do and um, yeah it was it's a case of um, seeing what they would be able to then do in the race and the opportunities that they could take. Now from this race it was pretty obvious from the start that it would be a one stopper and we've seen that Sauber especially in Australia have where they did a one stop race and uh, I think it was Adrian Sittel that was P11 so it was really a case of seeing what they could do here but then if everybody does the same thing then it kind of limits what 
they could do. Getting onto the race itself, it was quite disappointing for the team. I was really hoping for points once again, as I have been for pretty much all of the season since this has been one of the worst um, seasons of their history. But with Esteban Gutierrez, they were actually taking a bit of a risk. With Esteban's car, they were actually taking a little bit of a gamble with the safety car. They were really hoping that if the safety car came out, then it would really put things into place. And this is where I really do believe they would have scored points. They actually kept Esteban out for about 39 laps and by that time majority of the field around him had already done pit stops well when I say pit stops I mean like obviously one because it was a one-stop race so they left him quite late um, but yeah you know he said that it was a clean race um, hence he didn't pit for 39 laps and uh, he was running in the points for some time as well mainly because he didn't pit for so long this then meant that he went on to finish the race p15 and Sauber of course have been lacking pace as well through the course of the season so this didn't help things anymore especially trying to get through the field as well after making that pit stop. With Adrian Sutil he said that he actually had no grip on the medium tyres and the people behind him actually put the soft tyres on which kind of meant that they automatically had a bit of an advantage to get past him and um, still a pace problem he says and he collided with Roman Grosjean as you must have seen and that was then deemed as Roman Grosjean's fault, so it didn't affect Adrian Sittel too much, although that spin do, did lose him a little bit of time in the race. Um, luckily, he avoided any kind of contact and he, he was able to keep going, and that ended his race on P16, so just behind his teammate um, Gutierrez. So with the race overall and the whole weekend, it has to be said it was a disappointing weekend although it was much more of a positive weekend than we have seen in previous races where it really hasn't gone down to plan or just hasn't gone well in general so this was a bit more of a positive step than previous races if you guys get what I mean but it still does mean that Sauber have scored no points throughout the course of the season and that they are struggling and that is not a surprise because it's just really really sad to um, see them like this. The positive is that they tried a strategy that could have paid off ultimately. Unfortunately there wasn't a safety car so that strategy unfortunately didn't really pay off but it could have done and I think the positive from this is that you know both the drivers had pretty clean races and no mechanical or technical failures, not that I could see anyways. And I think that's a really positive step because for the majority of this, the races that we've had this season, one or both drivers, apart from driver errors in a couple of places, have actually you know, been unable to finish the race mainly due to mechanical problems. And had it not been for those mechanical problems, then I think Salva could have scored points and the fact that now we're getting to the end of the season and they're having a bit more of a cleaner race weekend is just a positive you know for the next coming races and hopefully the season after that as well because they are having such a difficult time but hopefully they can learn from this season and um, you know move forward even into the next race. Austin is next I'm very excited of course we still keep Jules Bianchi in our thoughts and hope for some very positive news soon. I also want to thank Salva for letting me do the fans perspective videos for I believe four Grand Prix roundups or I think it's five but I want to thank you because I have really really enjoyed sharing my thoughts with all of you and thank you for watching and I have to say it has been a really difficult time and a difficult season for the whole team and of course the fans as well but um, we have to look onwards and not behind and just try and hope the best for the team again thank you Salva I can't believe that this is my last roundup video for you it feels so strange because I swear we only just started the season. There are still three more races left which is very exciting. You just never know what could happen in Formula 1. So thank you all and also you can find me on youtube.com slash vlogs where I make videos on every single practice session, qualifying session, race, news updates, everything like that. I hope to see you all very very soon. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Salva Motorsport and I will see you guys all hopefully very soon. Bye!